89% of all equities are owned by institutional investors and ultra, ultra wealthy individuals in 2024. So equities being stocks, bonds, anything like that, all that Wall Street stuff. Um, yeah, not, not really promising when you realize that the stock market can potentially be rigged through uh, the, inter the, the institutional control of it through wealthy people and, and you know, organizations like BlackRock or Blackstone who are also um, can what they they're, they're what they call market makers and market movers. So let's check it. Check this out. The tyranny of the institutional investor. The modern investment landscape is do dominated by a troubling reality. A staggering 89% of all equities and stocks are owned by institutional investors and the ultra wealthy elite. This concentration of financial power in the hands of a privileged few poses a grave threat to the principles of fair and democratic market. At the heart of this issue lies a fundamental conflict of interest. These large institutional players, such as pension funds, hedge funds, asset management firms, do not invest with the same motivation as the average individual investor. Their primary concern is not the long-term health and prosperity of the companies they invest in, but rather the short-term maximization and of return to satisfy their own stakeholders. So they don't actually care about if a company is good in this patriotic way, like a strong country with strong companies and stuff. No, they're in it for to make a quick buck. And if they need to dump the stock, um, then it can go to zero overnight if, if all these people pull out. This myopic focus on quarterly earnings and share price fluctuations leads to these institutional investors engaging in a dangerous game of herding. Following the lead of another of other prominent players, rather than making decisions based on rigorous analysis and an, a genuine understanding of the underlying businesses. So knowing what you're in it for, knowing what the market is going to do, regardless of any hiccups and bumps and along for the long haul, because you believe in a company, not because you believe in profit. The result is a market that is increasingly divorced from reality. The fundamentals of a company that it purports to represent is no longer grounded in the real world. So moreover, the outsized influence of these institutional behemoths allows them to sway the decisions of corporate executives who are all too eager to cater to the demands of their largest shareholders. In any aspect of our current system, it's very clear that the only thing that is important over public safety uh, is shareholder returns, is making good on investments and the credit that is, you know, split between all the most powerful people in the world. Um, and, you know, they can put up the stock that they have as collateral and use it to buy other things which it's just mind blowing. Um, this dynamic undermines the notion of shareholder democracy. The interests of the many are sub subsumed at the whims of the few, okay? The consequences of the state affairs are manifold. Small and individual investors who make up the backbone of a healthy market are increasingly marginalized. Their voice is drowned out by the cacophony of institutional trading. Innovation and entrepreneurship, the lifeblood of a dynamic economy, are stifled as companies prioritize short-term stock performance over long-term sustainable growth. And this is also something I touch on a lot, is that these companies no longer are innovative in the way that uh, capitalists love to rant and rave about. Well, yeah, we innovate everything. No, you don't innovate anything. What you do is you buy back your own stock and you make sure that you're constantly enriching shareholders at the at the expense of the consumer by cutting off making the the product less quality or or of a lower quality 
it's not about innovation at some point because innovation means taking risks that could jeopardize the the linear upward trajectory of what capitalism is and says that it's exponential growth at all costs. So institutional investors such as mutual funds, pension funds, hedge funds uh, play a significant role in equity ownership. Appro approximately 75% of equities are owned by institutional investors alone. The ultra wealthy are categorized into different tiers based on their personal assets. You have the very high net worth. Individuals have 5 million to 30 million in personal assets. Ultra high net worth. Investors have private wealth ranging from 30 million to 1 billion. And the nosebleed tier, who technically fall under the UHNW, um, there are approximately 2,755 billionaires worldwide and their collective holdings altogether amounts to 13 trillion in wealth. It's a lot. In 2020, the global ranks of the UHNW individuals grew by 1.7%, nearly 300,000 people with a combined network of 35.5 trillion. So ultra high net worth individuals reached 101,000 in 2020, marking an 8.4 increase in the previous year. So the rich are getting richer. It is a sobering reality that the very institutions entrusted with safeguarding the retirement savings of millions have become the architects of a system that undermines the very foundations of capitalism. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, as the late Christopher Hitchens once said. And to be clear here, the tyranny of the institutional investor must be challenged lest we surrender the promise of a free and fair market to the whims of a privileged few. And keep in mind that they have order flow, which makes it, even when they've democratized the, the trading of the stock, they still have market data that you'll never have and can cut you on a deal before you've even placed an order. Um, it's it's really not it's not a gentleman's pursuit anymore. It's a it's a game that you usually can't win. 